Some caves are small enough to see the back wall before you even enter, while for others the cave could be an endless series of underground networks. Found over a long period of time in Goff's Cave in Cheddar Gorge in Somerset. From an ancient discovery that redefined history to a crystal skeleton fused into the walls, here are the 20 most shocking things ever found in a cave. Theater of Bones Bones aren't nearly as common to find as video games and old movies like to make us think. But if you happen to visit the Paris catacombs, you'll probably see enough bones to last a lifetime. It may as well be the darkest place in the City of Light, a home to bandits, smugglers, and other types of villainy from long ago. It now houses something close to 6 million Parisian bones. But why are there so many? The short answer is that a nearby cemetery was so full that the buried dead broke through the next door wall of a hotel and flooded it with the former living. With nowhere else to put them, the government took action and reburied them, this time in a giant catacombs. And voila, you have a tunnel lining the walls with the reburied unburied. But there's more to do than skull gaze in this huge underground cave. With over 300 kilometers or 186 miles worth of tunnels and a complex network of paths, it wouldn't make sense to go completely unused. But police in Paris found a fully functioning movie theater slash restaurant in some of its deepest depths. They're still completely at a loss to who could have come up with this idea, let alone actually go ahead and build all the facilities needed for it to function. Electricity, plumbing, disposal, you name it. Everything had a creative solution that must have taken some time to get established without any public knowledge, although some people must have known because it looked like quite the hot spot. But that doesn't necessarily mean the crowds were pleasant. Swastikas were painted on the ceiling, but so were Celtic crosses and Stars of David. So it could have been home to several groups at different times. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Not all caves are made after millions of years. Some are as recent as a lifetime ago from either man-made or natural disasters. And what scientists just discovered inside this cave terrifies the whole world. What we're looking at seems to be the foot of a disaster. Is it an art piece or a statue that fell over? The story is actually a bit more tragic than that. This is one of the aftermath results of what happened in Pompeii a few thousand years ago, although it wasn't recently excavated until the 1700s and again in the 1980s. A lot of things had been found and fossilized people too. What was once a full house, in fact, has more or less become a cave of destruction that peeks into the world of yesterday. We don't know who this person was that died at the bottom of some stairs, but there's also a lot of people in the same room that no one can identify. The whole town is full of memories of the path etched into the walkways and homes of once living crowds. If you had to guess, do you have any clue to what could have happened here? Was it a child that fell down the stairs on their way out to safety? Or maybe a servant that was caught by unfortunate timing while the owners fled their home? What do you guys think this scene could be? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to write out with the hashtag missing topic so we can see it. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Cave of Mummies The bigger the cave, the more ominous it seems. After all, it only gets darker the farther you go in it. But in ancient times, the darkness was perfect for hiding unwanted sites. In the Philippines, before its modern-day appropriation, and back when ancient tribes thrived on their own, the Kabayan caves were known for hosting mummified rituals to be rid of the dead for good. In this ancient past, a doctor's cure potentially be just as bad, if not worse than the illness. Since death was looming at almost any time, the Ibaloi tribe of Bingwe province had long established death rituals that were required active participation. Like the ancient Egyptians, they somehow knew to mummify their dead as part of the honor-bound rituals, but their embalming technique was a little different. They would cure the corpse, that is to say, they smoked the bodies dry until the human remains were more of a jerky husk than the living person from before. In order to speed up the process, they made sure to start dehydrating the body even before the inevitable death. It's a bit morbid to know that you're lending your mortician a hand, but hey, times were different, right? If death was inevitable, at least by ancient standards, then the soon-to-be victim would have to drink a concoction made up of mostly salt. After the person's death, 
they would be washed down with herbs and have tobacco smoke blown down into them to quicken the dehydration process even more. The caves eventually became their tombs, and those tombs were eventually robbed by Westerners in the 20th century. Currently, this site is under consideration to become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Then maybe these dead can finally rest in peace. The Crystal Bones Deep in the Taper Mountains Nature Reserve, accessible only after an hour's ride from San Ignacio in Belize, the Crystal Bones. Deep in the Taper Mountain Nature Reserve, accessible only after an hour's ride from San Ignacio in Belize, is the ATM Cave. No, it's not an exclusive place to pull out cash. It's short for Actun Tunuchil Muknao, which translates to the Cave of the Crystal Sepulchre. It's a mysterious site full of giant boulders and even larger empty rooms, but by the end of it, you'll have definitely crossed paths with a skeleton or two. These piles of bones are specifically from ritual sacrifices made thousands of years ago to the great Mayan gods and can range in size and age from newborn infants to fully grown adults. Some of the younger skulls have even been shape-shifted a bit to look like the head of an alien which caused some alarm to many historians before further examinations were made. But if you go even farther into the cave, you'll find out what's arguably the most well-known of the ancient Mayans, the Crystal Maiden. It's a skeleton of a 17-year-old boy that was first thought to be a woman from their size and frame, but later changed to the Crystal Prince after more digging was done. What's special about this so-called Crystal person is that they seem to have been crushed violently while they were still alive they were left untouched for something like 1,100 years, causing the bones to calcify and sparkle, giving it that fancy crystal title. Not much else is known about the circumstances of this skeleton, like who they were or why they had to die this way, but if this were a video game, you know there'd be a treasure buried underneath them. New Texts from the Old World A remote cave is the last place you would expect to find revolutionary history changing discoveries. Or wait, maybe it's the first but this particular cave in the Judean desert of Israel stunned archaeologists when it turned out to be housing two dozen Dead Sea Scroll fragments. For those who don't know, the Dead Sea Scrolls are ancient religious manuscripts written in Hebrew that were discovered between 1946 and 1956. They date as far back from the 3rd century BC all the way till the 1st century AD. Most of the scrolls were split into fragments and washed away throughout history whether from harsh environments or simply old age and improper care. But as one of the Israeli Antiquities Authority said, for the first time in approximately 60 years, archaeological excavations have uncovered fragments of a biblical scroll. The teams spelunked over 80 meters or 262 feet down into what's been affectionately called the Cave of Horror, where they found at least 40 skeletons of women, men, and children. Among these remains were likely Jewish rebels in hiding from the ancient Roman advance, and some of them seem to have been trying to protect their history as well. The fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in Greek translations, but they contained the books of Zechariah and Natham from the Book of the Twelve Minor Prophets and were later dated to have come from around the second century. What's more, the name of God in the text is accurately written in Hebrew. To call this discovery an amazing find is a bit of an understatement, but that also begs the question, just how many fragments are there in the world? Sipping Skull You might want to check out what this cup is before you drink from it. This uniquely pale and weathered mug may not suit everyone's taste, but it definitely has a history. For one, it's at the bottom of a human skull. It was found in Goff's Cave in the limestone gorge of the Mendip Hills near Bristol. It isn't the only skull cup to exist, which seems more obvious than we'd like to admit but it is the oldest to date. It was dated to around 12,750 BC and can be separated from any other regular skull by the specific cut marks seen on the outside. Container skulls were known for having markings left over by the flesh removal process that allowed it to keep a regular lip. They were mostly used as rituals or trophies to show strength, but you'll be hard pressed to find a tournament giving out one of these nowadays although it does get a bit more gruesome than just having a cup for show. Most of the time these skulls were carved, it was considered a bit more honorable to use the rest of the body rather than just tossing it away. Researchers think that many of the victims were also victims of cannibalism, to some extent. The bones were gnawed at by human teeth, 
and some were cracked open for the juicy bits of marrow and grease that can normally be found inside. But it seems as though they were also a part of the ongoing rituals. Scientists think that if they just wanted the tasty bits for nutrients, they would have also cracked the skull open rather than carved them out. But instead, many of these massacred bones have been delicately handled and discarded appropriately. World's Oldest Winery If wine tastes better when it's aged in a cold and dark place, then you just know some of these caves must make some great wineries. One of the oldest ones found so far comes from a prehistoric culture in Armenia. It was discovered at a burial site and presumed to have been dedicated to the dead of the time. Unfortunately, it looks like they might have gone through most of it before anyone else could. The cave was discovered near the village of Arini. Strangely enough, where some 5,500-year-old leather moccasin shoes were also found not too long ago. The cave housed a wine press for stomping grapes, storage tanks, drinking cups, and ancient withered grapevines. According to Gregory Aresian, an archaeologist from UCLA, this is the earliest, most reliable evidence of wine production. For the first time, we have a complete archaeological picture of wine production dating back 6,100 years. The excavations began in 2007, when the equipment was first noticed, although it took until 2010 before the digging teams could find the two feet deep vat where freshly stomped wine once poured. From there, the wine was stored in jars where the cool and dry conditions of the cave made it perfect for any wine collector's secret stash. DNA testing allowed for the discovery to become even more fruitful, with the understanding that the grapes grown here were fully domesticated. Since domestication processes yield more fruit, it seems as though culture tastes have existed for even longer than we thought. But with everything so well preserved, doesn't it really just make you wonder what 6,000-year-old wine could taste like? Hidden Stone Circles It should probably be a bit more obvious than it seems, but one of the reasons why we keep making new discoveries in these caves is that it's really hard to see what's inside of these things. If you've ever been deep enough into a cave, then you'll know that it's practically pitch black in there. Actually, without a flashlight or torch of some kind, it can get truly pitch black. So it isn't hard to fathom that a few archaeological finds might have been glossed over here and there, despite the amount of eyes and feet wandering about. One such case was found deep in the depths of France. Some strange stone rings were crafted out of stalagmites some 176,000 years ago, meaning it predates most human ancestry. Archaeologists can't say for sure who built these circles but they assume it was a bipedal species, most likely our pre-human relatives of Neanderthals. But with that discovery, it could mean that the Neanderthals were more human-like than we really knew. As the paleoanthropologist Chris Stringer of the Natural History Museum in London put it, this discovery provides clear evidence that Neanderthals had fully human capabilities in the planning and the constructing of stone structures, and that some of them penetrated deep into caves where artificial lighting would have been essential. We couldn't have said it any better ourselves. But the real question is, why did the ancient species travel so far into the darkness just to build such an elaborate structure that hasn't been seen until now? There are plenty of possible answers, like maybe the landscape changed, or maybe they made other similar constructs that were lost to the elements, or maybe it was really the work of aliens. But for now, the truth is still out of reach. 17. Tiny Coffins Some caves have hidden treasures, but you know the saying, one man's treasure is another man's trash. Well, one's dream of a discovery could quickly become a nightmare as well. In the 1800s, near the rocky path of Arthur's Seat in Edinburgh, was the nesting ground for a group of rowdy boys. While on the hunt for something or another, they stumbled upon a little cave with little treasures. 17 miniature coffins, to be exact. Eight of them have managed to survive another couple hundred years and are currently on display in the National Museum of Scotland. But who designed them and what was their original purpose? The short answer is that we don't know for sure. The long answer gets a bit more complex as the evidence continues to pour in. The small figures in the coffins are all clearly handmade and in the same meticulous style. The carvings indicate it was likely by a shoemaker and one that had worked for most of their life at the trade. Some townsfolk at the time claimed that they were crafted by the devil, or even worse, witches. But since that was a common excuse for the unknown, we should probably rule that theory out. Instead, a more plausible idea is that they belonged to a couple of men known as William Burke and William Hare. 
The two wills were in the shady business of selling corpses to doctors for whatever medical reason they had at the time. The doctors needed bodies and the downtrodden immigrants needed cash. You might be seeing where this is going. The proof is in the pudding, so they say, as for the fact that both Williams were eventually arrested on murder charges. And exactly how many murders were found was 17. Night Drawings Caves usually make a good shelter from rainfall. Technically, they make a good shelter from most of nature's harsh elements, but it looks like not every cave works the same. In the Royston Cave in Hertfordshire of England, a Knights Templar cave has been suffering from water damage, ruining the 800-year-old carved drawings within it. The carvings are meant to depict images of four patron saints along with biblical scenes of John the Baptist with Mary, the Holy Mother of Jesus. The cave, as we mentioned, was previously used by the Order of the Knights Templar that took part in the violently celebrated medieval crusades. But these particular drawings were also made famous by the famous book by Dan Brown, The Da Vinci Code. None of these were known about outside of their original functions until 1742, when some working men from above stumbled onto the site by pure coincidence. It's since been put under a risk status because of the newfound water holes seeping through the cave art. But according to cave manager Nikki Patton, the risk status shouldn't be considered in a negative light. It's more of a call to action, he says. Hopefully, with the new development, some changes will be made and the art can be preserved even better. It's a part of the land's history, after all. He truly hopes that the proper conservation will eventually take place. Growing up in a cave Kids will be kids. The ancient Mayan children seem to be as destructive as kids these days. If you give them something to color with, they'll just paint it all over the walls. But hopefully that's what these walls were intended for. 137 handprints were found in shades of black and red in a northern Yucatan Peninsula cave, just outside some of Mexico's famous pyramids. Researchers think it could be connected to a coming-of-age ritual by the Mayans, seeing as how almost all of the handprints came from children. After some deep analysis, it was determined that most of the hands belonged to kids aged between 12 and 13. As for the ritual, they think that black was intended to symbolize death of childhood, like a growing up ceremony where a boy becomes a man or a girl becomes a woman. The red print was meant to translate to rebirth. The children who touched the wall with one hand would then touch it with the other as a newborn adult. It definitely seems cheaper than throwing an extravagant Sweet 16 party. A few other artifacts were also found inside the Cave of Wonders. One of the more interesting discoveries was a carved face and six painted relief sculptures that could be traced to around 1000 AD. Around that period of time was when the land was struck with a drought and likely when the Mayans began to abandon their city. The age of the artifacts indicates that they were likely the last things to be stored before being forgotten for a while, but at least they've been found now. Giant Crystals Can crystals ever be too large? For some people, probably not. But once you're able to walk on top of it like a bridge, does it really count as an accessory? What we're trying to say is that the crystals in Nica, Mexico are impressively huge. They were found by some miners digging for ore in the year 2000, and some of them are big enough to reach 12 meters or practically 40 feet. The cave has since been given the fitting name of Cave of Crystals and sits under a mountain laced in lead, zinc, and silver. It's like a geologist's dream come true. One crystallographer came all the way from Spain just to see the magnificent minerals, and he did not leave disappointed. It took researchers nearly two decades to figure out all of the main questions they had, such as where the crystals came from and what made them so big. But now that they have those answers more or less summed up, most people want to try and preserve the natural wonder. Crystals do seem to have a unique power unlike many other sedentary styles of rocks. They just have the power to keep growing as long as the conditions are right and it would be pretty cool to see some of these crystals up close so hopefully the miners don't collect them all before they're done growing. Aquatic Caves Picture this, you're set for an excavation into the unknown. You and your team finally have the resources and approval to go where no one else has gone and visit the submerged caves of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and see what no one else has seen before. But then you get there and it turns out someone beat you to the punch 12,000 years ago. That's basically what happened to the one exploration tee when it turned out that a prehistoric group of people made their way into this extensive network of cave tunnels before they were fully submerged in water. From the extraction pits, our modern-day scientists found digging tools, 
markers for ancient miners, and hearths used to provide some type of light. Once the caves began to fill up with water around 8,000 years ago, most of the people in the area moved on to a whole new region. The dive team traveled for over 4 miles and around 7 kilometers into three separate cave systems before calling it quits. During that time, they were able to find pristine artifacts that hadn't been touched in more than a few hundred years. There's still a lot more to explore, but just finding these paths was complex enough. Who knows just how far humans were able to make it in these caves back when it was still traversable by foot. Bell Witch Cave Kate the Bell Witch is an urban legend that kids would dare each other to say three times in front of a mirror in order to be spooked by her forever tormented ghost girl. But her true story involves the Bell Witch Cave, which she is named after. According to this often untold legend, a group of kids had been playing on the Bell Farm when they found the now infamous cave alongside it. The cave reaches around 500 feet, which may as well go on forever if you're a young enough kid. So during one of their exploration tours, a single child managed to get stuck in a hole and couldn't get out. Only after he cried for help did he realize who the hole belonged to, Kate Bell, who allegedly choked out John Bell and tortured his daughter was on the other end of the hole the child had been struggling with. But instead of wreaking her witchy wrath, she performed an act of kindness and pulled the boy out. But even with a single good deed under her belt, many think that the cave itself is haunted and there have been numerous strange reports from that site. Apparently, witch allegations are just impossible to beat, sometimes. Crystal People We previously mentioned this famous ATM, otherwise called Acton Tunukio Muknal, but one of the topics we glossed over could use a bit of a further analysis. The Crystal Maiden is a world-famous skeleton that was thought to be a young woman in her 20s that was sacrificed to the Mayan gods of old. The remains can be seen on their own back with an open mouth skull and a glittering skeleton covered in growing calcite, a natural resource in caves like these. The crystal's maiden gets its name from these sparkling calcites, although the maiden portion has since been revised a bit. Some new advances in skeleton reading technology must have come out because some researchers have revised the information to state the maiden might actually be a slender man. It really is hard to tell with how the bones have reshaped themselves over the years. They kind of look like the sugar retreats from the Day of the Dead ceremonies in Mexico. The whole cave is technically named after this crystal person though, so it makes sense that there should be an air of wonder around them. Hopefully we get to the bottom of this mystery and find out what exactly put their body into this position. Some mysteries definitely need closure. Nature's Slimy Builders Snot tight sounds like the cross between a snot and petite, or maybe it's snow and appetite technically both are wrong because it's actually the name for a microscopic group of bacteria that hangs on the walls and roofs of caves like stalactites. Oh, but it turns out it does not get its name from being a bit snot-like. The colony of bacteria can only exist in extremely toxic and acidic environments, so we don't often encounter them on our daily commutes. They mostly survive through chemosynthesis, which is like photosynthesis but with other chemicals instead of sunlight. The snotites will transform volcanic sulfur into energy along with sulfuric acid. So if the world ever gets taken over by huge pools of magma, these creatures would live in paradise. As it turns out, these species might be the long ignored architects behind many limestone caves. While many scientists thought that they were formed naturally over time, it's come to light that this bacteria type might have laid the groundwork in the stones before nature could take its course. Trip to the Bottom Throughout all of human time, there have been a good amount of exaggerations. Like when they say bottomless fries, do they really mean bottomless or is it just until the cook runs out of potatoes? With that being said, the bottomless pit in Mammoth Cave National Park from Kentucky is probably not true bottomless, but it does have the record for the longest cave system in the world, with 426 miles worth and then some. If distance could travel in a maze, you'd almost think the whole cave is bottomless, but no. The mysterious Mammoth Cave is what we're talking about and it's captivated all who behold it for centuries on end. The cave was first stumbled upon by Stephen Bishop in the 19th century. Since then, it's been a major tourist attraction, with the hole estimated to be about 105 feet deep and at an inspiringly steep slope. So there's actually a bottom to it, but you would have to be a real daredevil to consider finding it without the proper gear and safety measures. You'll come across the pit after traveling down a dark tunnel, 
called the Avenue of Size, named for its depressingly low ceilings and narrow walls. From there, you'd come across a few small pools of water, and then you're there. The end of the line that leads to an ending even further away. But even if there's a bottom to this long dropping pit, you probably don't want to stare directly into the void. You never know what might stare back. The Missing Dog Link When dogs fetch for bones, does it matter what kind of animal that bone once belonged to? Probably not. Most dogs are pretty simple creatures after all, but this 33,000-year-old dog skull isn't something you'd want your living dog to get a hold of. The ancient creature was found captive in a Siberian mountain cave, along with some of the oldest evidence to date that could signify ancient dog domestication. And if you couple that information with another similar find from a cave in Belgium, you'll come to realize that dog domestication is a lot older than most people thought. But could this mean that not all dogs come from the evolution of wolves? More likely than not, it mostly means that domestication of the canine species began a lot earlier and might have been a very different process than how we think of it today. The skull itself is an extremely well-preserved one, from details of the mandible to what teeth it had at the time that are also possible to determine because of its amazing condition. Figuring out that the dog it came from was domesticated is apparently the easy part. But what makes it more confusing is that there aren't any modern dogs that seem to be linked back to this stud of a fossil. At 33,000 years old, it predates the last glacial maximum, or the entirety of the Ice Age. The era was a great influence and detraction from many civilizations at the time, so any theory we have on the dog could easily be proven wrong by a series of unlikely coincidences. People could travel to places that they couldn't necessarily get back to and animals could relocate at a quicker pace without having to worry about their new climate. A real caveman. Fact is almost always stranger than fiction and you couldn't find a more unbelievable story. The Neanderthal skeleton became immortalized forever when its owner fell down into a cave and began melting into the walls. The Altamura Man is named after the location he was found, a cave in southern Italy called La Malunga, discovered in 1993 near Altamura. The body was believed to have been badly hurt, although it's likely the person died of starvation or dehydration first. The biggest unknown factor, though, is whether the creature was truly a Neanderthal or a human. It took some time, but that question finally did get an answer not too long ago. By studying the shoulder bone structure and gathering some DNA for testing, researchers at Newcastle University, Sapienza University of Rome, and University of Firenze were able to figure out that this is definitely a Neanderthal. But to be fair, it seems more cave than skeleton at this point, so we get why it took so long to find the truth. Ancient art. It's hard to say what part of culture developed the earliest in humans. Was it hunting and gathering, building a shelter, or maybe just drawing art? The Bembetka cave paintings in South Asia are considered to be the earliest depictions of human art known so far. They can be found in Madhya Pradesh. The caves are spread out through something like 750 rock shelters with over 100 paintings of animal and human caricatures in various shades and colors. Do they look realistic? Well, no. But you've got to cut these guys some slack. They didn't know modern art history in the ancient past. The earliest of these drawings seems to go into detail what the lives of hunters and gatherers were like for the Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods. Collective civilizations weren't really a thing yet, so these pictures act as a bit of an ancient journal in a way. The paintings also answer a few questions about what the geography could have looked like back then. Caves with the densest layers of pictures, for instance, likely meant that there was more sunlight exposure than the other surrounding spots. On top of that, Many of the rock layers in each cave have drawings over their drawings, giving us a timeline after collecting samples from each layer. Some scientists think that they might even date back to 40,000 BC or even earlier, but they also think that due to their advanced nature for the time, there might be even older drawings out there. Guess the search is still on. Exploding Snakes You never know what you'll come across in one of nature's many wonders, but chances are that you'll find even more of nature's wonders. A construction site in Brazil unearthed an enormous anaconda and it left the builders terrified. It went down or maybe came up after a controlled explosion in the cave of Altamira in the northern state of Para. It seems as though this 33-foot-long snake that weighed 63 stones, or roughly 880 pounds, was simply minding its own business until it was unearthed along with the rest of the ground. The workers were very unsure of how to handle the unique situation and eventually chained the confused creature to a crane. Later on, 
actually used the crane to lift the anaconda into the air to see its yellow spotted stomach, which not too many people online were pleased about. Hearsay on the internet thinks that the workers killed the innocent snake. That claim has yet to be proven, but the snake was reported dead, so there doesn't seem to be much room for any arguments. As one commenter wrote, if it was a fisherman killing the snake, he took a fine, but it's a large company, so nobody does anything. It could be said that the workers were only doing their jobs, but the video footage definitely tells a story of some men who were very unsure of what to do. There may have likely been a proper way to reach peace, but when a snake the size of five NBA stars stacked on top of each other is facing you down from wrecking your home, you'd probably be stunned as well. Hopefully, some of these discoveries haven't taken out your spirit of adventure. Caves can be scary to investigate at first, but the farther in we dig, the more we learn about our past and possibly our future. Let's look forward to even more cave dwelling soon as we learn what's even further beyond the unknown.